All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing lateral inhibition. Lateral inhibition is a very tricky topic for some students, mainly because it's either not explained well or the pictures or graphs you see about lateral inhibition are straight garbage. If you Google lateral inhibition graphs or pictures, whatnot, on Google, you probably notice that 99% of them are very confusing and hard to understand. They're straight up trash, in my opinion. I, if I could, I would fire 99% of people who draw these lateral inhibition graphs because they don't know what the, they don't, they just make it way too difficult than it is to understand. Here's what I did: I redrew it. I took and I I kind of took an idea from another table. I did not directly plagiarize it. I just made it better, okay, to understand. Because the one I looked at, I was like, okay, this is not too bad but I can make it like a hundred times better. So that's what I did. <laughs> so that's what I did. Okay. Let's start slowly. What's going on here. So think we have an, think about, we have like an arm here and we have three receptors on the arm in a, in a general location. We have receptor a, which is the purple block looking thing, rectangular structure. We have receptor B and receptor C. The receptors are also neurons, same, same word, same name, same word. They're synonymous, essentially, essentially. So we have three receptors, the purple one, the blue one, and the pink one. We're going to apply a stimulus to each of these three receptors. Think about a stimulus as, you know, like uh, your finger touching your arm, for example. Okay? Now, the receptor in the middle, the blue one, it's going to feel the most stimulus or high intensity stimulus. This is basically the actual center of your finger is touching the arm, okay? And then that pressure you feel is the B, is B receptor, it's picking up the most stimulus. The A and C are basically picking up the surrounding area of the finger, okay? So it's still pressing down, it's still applying pressure, but not as much as the middle part of your finger, right? As much as B. So A and C are feeling basically lower stimulus, okay? I hope that makes sense. That's the most, that's probably the hardest part to explain about this picture. So now neuron A or receptor A is going to speak with the second order neuron, which is basically what it's saying is that this receptor is going to talk to another neuron in your body. That's what's happening. So the second order neuron, so the, the A, receptor A is going to talk to the second order, the purple one, basically, the second, pur the second purple one you see, right? We're going to call, let's just call this A2, okay, for simplicity reasons. That's A2, this will be B1, uh, B2, sorry, and this will be C3, C2, what am I saying? <laughs> okay, so purple talks to purple, blue talks to blue, pink talks to pink. Don't worry about the red line yet, okay? So, essentially, just to repeat, receptor A is going to synapse with Neuron A, A2, receptor B or neuron B is going to synapse with B2, and C is going to synapse with C2, okay? And it's going to basically transmit the signal, fire an action potential. The action potential is essentially going to go down, you know, the axon and, you know, synapse with the, the second order neuron that's to come, okay? Notice that we got a high stimulus for B. Okay, so let's focus on B. Okay, so high stimulus. It's going to go down the axon and speak with B, correct? As we already stated. But what's going to happen is since B has the highest stimulus out of all, it's recepting, it's receiving the highest stimulus compared to A and C, B, it's going to secrete, it's going to basically make an axon, it's going to touch or synapse with A2 and C2, okay? It's going to basically synapse and basically tell that second order neuron, A2 and C2, to basically shut up. It's literally telling it to silence yourself. Do not, do not put in action potential. Why is it important? Why are we doing this? What's the purpose of this? So it's actually for location. Okay? It's a very important thing for location. So let me draw you a picture for you to understand. So pretend this is your finger, okay? And we feel pressure here, okay? And it's and we receive it in this receptive field area, okay? 
how do we pinpoint exactly where we feel it? Okay, so we are feeling it at basically the epicenter right here, okay, at this point right here, okay? How does our brain know we feel it at the exact same point? How do we know, how does our brain, body know that we feel it exactly here? If the entire receptive field is this big, right, there's neurons, there's neurons all over this pink area, but how do we know exactly where the stimulus is coming from? This is how, it's lateral inhibition. It's able to pinpoint exactly where we feel a stimulus. Okay. So essentially what we're doing is we're silencing A2 and C2. And the only one speaking to our brain is B2. Let me rephrase that a little bit. A2 and C2 are going to be still finding action potentials. It's still going to go to our brain. It's still going to tell our brain we're feeling something, but it's not going to fire as much action potentials compared to B2. Okay, so let's do the B2 action potential graph. So this is B2. And the action potential graph is going to look like this. It's going to be crazy. A lot of action potentials. Okay. A2 and C2. So purple. And then C2. The action potential graph for this, da 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 da, is going to be like, eh, we're still going to have some, but not as much. So our brain is able to figure out, okay, this area where we feel the most action potentials is where the stimulus is coming from. Okay? So A2 and C2, yeah, they're firing action potentials. That's fine. So we know, it, you know, it, it helps us kind of know, okay, that surrounding area kind of hurts. We feel, we'll feel pressure, but that's not exactly where the stimulus is coming from. We feel it at B2, right, the epicenter, because that's where the most action potentials are. And the reason we feel, the reason there's less action potentials here for A2 and C2 is because B is inhibiting A2 and C2. It's telling basically, hey, shut up. Okay, what you need to know is the area that has the most stimulus is the one that's going to be doing the inhibiting. Okay, so A and C are not going to do any inhibition. It's the area where there's, where there's the highest stimulus. That's basically going to be telling the other neurons around it to shut up, silence yourselves. Okay, this is one of the most trickiest topics, but if you understood this explanation, then you're going to be totally fine. So just a little bit of recap summary is the area, the receptor that has the most stimulus, getting the most stimulus, it's going to secrete its axons or it's going to make axons to its neighboring second order neurons. And it's going to tell, it's going to basically send an inhibiting signal. Okay. I hope you found this useful. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys later. See you tomorrow.